So we really felt the Phillies game would be done by now. It's 432 on a Friday. The game starts at 1 o'clock. That's a long spring training game, Grapefruit League. Frank Close is there. He's in Clearwater. And it's the bottom of the ninth right now as the Phillies just gave up three in the ninth to uh, put them in this situation. Boy, who got lit up for three? Oh, local product, Zach Warren, St. Augustine Prep. Uh, he came in for two-thirds of an inning. Pitched well the other day, actually. Uh, but it looks like Warren was the guy who uh, gave up the three runs that sent this game to a 5-5 game. Otherwise, Frank, the game would be over, right? Yes, it would. I thought this would be nice and neatly tied up, and <laughs> I'd be able to tell you about a Phillies win, but unfortunately, Warren didn't get it done. They had to actually relieve him to get the final out. Uh, not a good day for, for Warren. No, and he pitched well in his first outing. I think he had a couple of strikeouts in uh, the one inning that he worked in the game. Got a win uh, in the opener for the Phillies, uh, but he did not pitch well today. The St. Augustine Prep uh, alum, uh, he's down there. W- w- Warren is what, at uh, single A? He pitched uh, single A last year. He had a pretty nice season, 40 appearances, ERA uh, 3.3, I believe. Uh, but uh, he's probably not factoring into the Phillies' plans in the immediate future, but uh they did give him a look this spring. All right. Uh, let's start with Aaron Nola. Two innings. He gave up six hits, uh, but he did have six strikeouts. So uh, the good and bad of Nola, I guess you saw today. Actually, Nola looked pretty good. Uh, some of the hits were, unfortunately, misplays in the field. Um, Gene Segura kind of botched a couple at third base. Uh, you know, he's getting he's getting used to it, but he did make a nice play to sort of redeem it. Uh, but Nola looked very, very good. In fact, the, the third inning he came out for – uh, after he had struck out. So he struck out all six outs that he got. And in the uh, third inning when he came out, unfortunately for him, it was a couple balls that were misplayed or infield hits, and then a little tapper up, up through up through the middle of center field. And so uh, that was that was the story there. And uh, Philly's now with the bases loaded with no outs in the uh, bottom of the ninth. All right, so you might hear a Bronx, uh, a, not a Bronx, a loud cheer coming up. <laughs> yes. Uh, you might, you if might. something happens here and Frank is at the game, and, of course, you can uh, check out his coverage of the Phillies at 97.3 ESPN.com. Nola pitched two. Neris came in there as well. But the guy that I'm interested to get your take on is Liriano, the lefty, an older guy. But uh, we talked about the bullpen yesterday. But to see him come in, get a strikeout, uh, he did get a walk. But Liriano, how did he look? Because I think he's a pretty important guy potentially in this bullpen. Yeah, he looked good, and, and he's somebody I liked last year. I, you know, last year I was at a game. Uh, it was a Phillies off day. I traveled over to Pittsburgh and was watching the Pirates play the Braves. And, uh, you know, I was watching him pitch as a reliever. I thought, you know, that's a guy the Phillies should try to trip for this year. And ultimately they did not and uh, put together a nice relief season and looking pretty good today. He had a clean inning. Um, by the way, a name that we haven't talked much about is Mauricio Yovera. Um, he looks pretty good, too, out of the bullpen. He, he's somebody, I think, that could make a positive impact in the bullpen sooner or later. By the way, Garcia also came in, two strikeouts in just an inning. Uh, Romero, two strikeouts uh, in an inning as well. So, you know, that's one thing that this Phillies bullpen has had problems with, finding guys that can throw the ball by people, these electric young bullpen arms, and uh, that battle will continue today. Another thing at the uh, – you know, when you look through the batting lineup today, Bryce Harper, um, obviously, everybody's got eyes on him. But he had a three RBI day with a double, and it's good on Bryce Harper uh, anniversary day to see Harper kind of uh, getting into a groove early. Yeah, and he was just a couple of feet from that being a grand slam. He hit a ball off the center field fence. So, and by the way, the Phillies did win uh, a walk-off fielder's choice. <laughs> the Phillies are our winner's 6-5 here in Clearwater. But, uh, but yeah, Bryce Harper just missed the grand slam. Uh, really kind of set the tone that, that it was all Phillies up until the uh, the top of the ninth inning when Warren struggled. But now they leave with a win here today. I want to go back to Segura. You mentioned him playing third base and how he's looked down there. Uh, obviously swung the bat pretty good, one for three, he's hitting four seventeen. But what is your feeling on, you know, how comfortable Segura is going to be playing third base and if that's where he will end up going? I know we talked a little yesterday, but now that you got to see him in person. I still think that that's where he's going to be. Uh, maybe he just needs to get used to it a little bit. Maybe he's got a little jitters, uh, you know, playing this position for the first time in, in front of people in games. But uh, but really, uh, it just makes makes so much sense to keep Scott Kingery at second base. You know, if, if, 
if you put Scott Kingery at third and then Bone comes up, are you just going to move him again? Or, or it's kind of hard to, to to really see it going any other way, especially when you realize that Didi Gregorius is here. He's going to play a shortstop all year, and, and and when he departs as a free agent, then it's probably Segura that will be the shortstop again. So I would just leave Segura on the left side. He might might take his lumps a little bit, and and really. I think the biggest thing that he needs to do is, is just get used to a rhythm with D.D. Gregorius and uh, making sure that each of them kind of knows when to yield to the other one. But uh, they come, like the one play today, it was he was going to his right uh, and actually just sort of uh, booted the ball into, into foul, foul territory. It counted as a hit. Uh, he didn't get an error on it, but um, it, was a, it would have been a rather tough play if he did make it. But in the end, he did make some nice plays uh, at third base. And, and, and I think that you know, his confidence will grow with the more he gets to play the position this spring. Uh, Frank, you got a chance to see, you got a glimpse of the future potentially today. Uh, Eric, uh, Alec Bohm playing third base and uh, Bryson Stott playing shortstop together. Were they at the, out there at the same time? Yeah, it was pretty cool. And it's, it's funny because they kind of look alike. <laughs> so you sent me the I, picture uh, of Alec, uh, <laughs> no, of Bryson Stott. And I said, is that Alec Bohm? And you said, no, it's Bryson Stott. I was like, and then you sent me the next picture. I said, "These guys look identical." <laughs> I did put them on Twitter, so you can see you can see them side by side. But but yeah, they, they do kind of look alike. You can tell Boom's a little bit taller, but uh, they got the same same kind of hair, and uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, Stott, as he came up to the plate, he got a nice round of applause from the fans. So um, you could tell that they're they're excited to see him, and it's pretty cool that he gets to come up and, and play a major league game today. I mean, especially since you know they're at home. But, you know, they really had no shortage of players, but with so many of the infield types having gone to the the Fort Myers trip to play the Minnesota Twins and Boston Red Sox, maybe they, you know they brought him over as an extra today from the uh, minor league side of things, and um, you know it's pretty nice to see him in in major league action. Nice, nice little. Uh, Nice little showcase for the first round pick from last year. Yeah. Now, Alec Bohm, um, we all assume ETA could be later this year, if not next year at the earliest uh, or at the latest, I guess. Uh, what about Bryson Stott out of UNLV? What does uh, his season look like this year? That's a really good question. I think he's somebody who could rise through the system quickly, just like Bohm did. You know, Bohm was at three different levels last year, and and. It, you know, you could see you could see Stott. I would I wouldn't be shocked if they start him in Lakewood and he and he goes to Clearwater and then to Reading before it's all done, which was kind of what Bohm did last year. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, but he, he's going to decide that with his bat. Uh, I think that's what'll that's that's what'll tell the final story. But the nice thing about drafting college players like this sometimes is they're a little older and a little bit more advanced in their um, in their development, and so uh, they have the potential to to ride through the minor league system rather quickly if they if they demonstrate that they can handle the level, then they'll be on to the next level. And right now, Bohm, he hasn't touched AAA. Uh, well, I think he'll have a little bit of AAA, uh, get it, get some at-bats there, but I, I think he could be a fast riser again. And, and Scott, you know, he, he could, he could, he could uh, call the shots the same way. And, and, you know, this time next year, we could be wondering if he's going to come up at some point earlier in the season. Uh I want to ask you about tomorrow because uh, I don't know where the, is the game in Clearwater tomorrow because Zach Wheeler is scheduled. I don't believe it's in Clearwater, but I think Zach Wheeler is scheduled to make his Phillies debut tomorrow. Am I right about that? You're correct. He's going to be in Dunedin. I'm going to head. Uh, did, luckily, Dunedin is like ten minutes from here, so I'm going to make sure I head up to Dunedin. To make sure you go Zach to the Dunedin Smokehouse while you go there. Oh, I always do that. That's that's my regular uh, place. So after the game, I plan to. Hit the Dunedin Smokehouse, and, and there's a lot of really good breweries in Dunedin as well, too. Yes, there so is. Yes, there's no, there is. no shortage of uh, places to hang out in Dunedin after the game, but I will definitely be, be heading to that game. We're going to catch Zach Wheeler, and I'm going to check out the Dunedin Smokehouse probably. <laughs> <laughs> I actually a friend of mine who's down here just asked me what I'm doing after the game. I said, "Well, I'm, I'm going to hang in Dunedin for a bit." And <laughs> Tomorrow. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now tonight you're going to the bait house, right? <laughs> I haven't thought much about tonight yet. I just did you ask? Here, so. Did you ask Scott Lauber if he went to the bait house? Scott is not here, as far as I can tell. So, okay. uh, so, so Matt Breen is representing the Inquirer tonight. Gotcha. 
Well, uh, a lot of fun, uh, obviously. Uh, as the Phillies win today, 6-5. You just heard the walk-off in the background there. Um, by the way, Scott Kingery yesterday, homered and knocked in three. I saw him batting leadoff yesterday. Your opinion, where Kingery will hit and best spot, in your opinion, in the lineup? That's a really good question. I, I, I think the Phillies will go Andrew McCutcheon again for the leadoff spot. I, I mean, he really did set a good tone for that. You, you remember how they came out of the gate last year. And that was really the tone set by Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, but one thing about Andrew McCutcheon is he's not going to play a lot this year um, in the early going. I think they're going to take him easy. So, like, if he's facing any uh, tough righties, you might see Jay Bruce in left field and dead. And on days like that, you know, maybe maybe you see Kingery and Bruce flip-flop and Kingery uh, will lead off where McCutcheon did and, and maybe Bruce will bat down the order where Kingery did. So, uh, Kingery... Uh, could, could be batting seventh in this lineup since it's, it's a lot deeper this year. Uh, and if he's batting seventh, you know, but uh, maybe he's the guy that, that pops into the leadoff spot when McCutcheon's not around. So I think I think that's uh, that's a spot he could find himself at least some of the time. All right. Uh, good stuff, Frank. Enjoy the rest of your time in Clearwater covering the Phillies. Of course, there's always a game down there to be had. If the Phillies are on uh, the road or an off day, there's a ton of baseball within about a 20-mile radius. It's a great trip to go down, and Frank gets a chance uh, to cover the team this weekend, and uh, we'll get more reaction from him back on Monday show or Tuesday for the mailbag, and uh, we'll check in on the Phillies. And, of course, the Powder Blue podcast Tuesday night from 6 to 7 right here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, Frank, take care, pal. Have a great weekend, Mike. You do the same. We know you're going to in Clearwater Beach, a great place to be.